All right. Welcome back in. It's uh, North Florida Sports Network. I have the pleasure to be joined with the host of the Fangs Up podcast, Keith Hadley, is joining us again. He told you it would be a while. When we talked to him last, we were talking about potential head coaching candidates for the 19th head coach at Florida A&M University. They have come up with that coach. It is none other than James Colsey the third. Keith, man, it's great to have you back on. How you doing, man? I'm well, man. Thanks for having me on. Hey, Always no, good to be on with a fellow Trojan. That's right. Exactly. Um, all right. Let me ask you first first and foremost. Were you uh you were right about how long it took to get this hire. Um what do you think about it? Just you like it or is it who you thought it should I be? I like it. I like it. I think it's the lesser of all evils, uh, if I'm being honest. I think you hired the coach that had the coaching experience, but I, I do feel like you missed an opportunity to probably bring in somebody who really paid their dues and who, in the end, walked away because they felt slighted. Mm. And that's Ryan Smith. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's de- defensive coordinator Ryan Smith, who... Uh, who is the D coordinator of that dark cloud yeah. defense. D coordinator has been there for several years. Right. And he was the assistant head coach. He actually hires James Colsey right. and brings Colsey onto the staff. And then you over, you pick Colsey over Smitty rock, which, well, you I know, I think that's of outside of football, honestly. And I think oh, you, touch, you touched on it a little bit last time we, we spoke that elephant yeah. in the room of that oh, uh, obvious thing. Um, he would he handled it with nothing but class. Um, and he's moved on. Was it Murray State? Murray State defensive coordinator, yeah. linebackers coach up there. Yeah, great yeah. dude. Love Smitty. Yeah, he really did a great job. And uh, it's the pressures on James Colsey now to pick up not only where that defense left off, but most importantly, I think for him, his most important decision. Is who who's going to run the offense? What do you have for who's me on that? Offense? Nothing new right now. Yes. Um, last thing we kind of heard where he was looking, and I talked to him on Thursday, uh, so he was kind of looking at kind of look at some internal hires. Mainly, I took that internal hire to be on the defensive coordinator spot, mm-hmm. offensive coordinator. I, I I don't know where he goes with it because mm-hmm. at a certain point, you not only need an offensive coordinator, you need a quarterbacks coach because right. your current offensive coordinator. He, he didn't really call the plays. He probably he definitely understands the offense, but he's the offensive line coach. So mm-hmm. you need somebody to come in there and coach quarterbacks now. So we, we don't have any leads right now as yeah. to who the new OC is going to be. We don't even know who the new person running the football program is going to be because he left. So mm-hmm. you lost your offensive coordinator slash head coach. You lose your defensive coordinator. You lose your football operations manager. You lose your recruiting coordinator. Right. So it, he There's went to Colorado, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we Riz goes to Colorado. Yep. Um yeah, everything changed. But you know, it was like a culmination there in Atlanta and it was a a chance to I guess re start over and try to you know, what would you it's a, do you think it's going to be more of a rebuild for James or or a reload? How, do you, how what are you, what was your first instinct in terms of that question? My first instinct I think it's a reload more than a rebuild. The only reason I don't think it's a complete rebuild is because you have so many of the key players coming back. You have Gentle Hunt coming back. Right now, Kendall Bowler is scheduled to come back unless he uh, does go into the transfer portal, which, not going to lie, the rumor mill is that once that new window opens, he may go that way. Mm -hmm. So you have so many of your defensive players that were your big-time players that are coming back. But at the same point, you can't expect the full reload because you've lost so much. Right. And in, in recruiting, like he yeah. was in Kansas on Thursday when we were talking, like he wasn't even in Florida. He's like, I'm trying to get these junior right. college players. Yes. So you can already see where he's not recruiting high school players. He's trying to get players who've already had some college experience right. and bring them in because you got to fill major voids. That's, that's exactly what you want to see. You saw someone like Rodney Hill, former FSU running back, who committed when Willie before Willie Simmons resigned, decommitted, went down to Miami, but now is back committed to the Rattlers. So that's yeah. a good yeah. that that's good. 
And that's probably from coming, talking to James Colsey. Talking uh, to Colsey, yeah. Co- uh, Coach said that, you know, he spoke with um, Hill and his mom and they made the, you know, family decision that it was the best option. And, you know, word out there, it, was, it was, wasn't was a lot more than a P- PWO from right. UM. And they may have offered more, but, you know, yeah. again, the word is. And so, are you going to spend seventy five thousand dollars for a preferred walk on to play at the University of Miami, or are you going to take a scholarship at FAMU, uh, where right. even if you are a preferred walk on, it ain't seventy five thousand? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, you know, you have a former Seminole in James Colsey, who you know was a member of the ninety three national championship team. Uh, so that you know that's going to hopefully, you know just continue that relationship that I think Willie and Mike were starting. And that's just a good solid relationship between two teams, right, right in the backyards of each other, you know? And uh, I love it. And, right. and William Floyd, don't forget. Well, like yeah. we're, I'm trying to remember if him and William Floyd were ever teammates, like that's something else to look at. And Ron Dugans went to FAMU DRS. So the cross connections there yeah. are, are endless. Yeah. And it's just, well, especially nowadays, you know, it's, and these kids are going to get, you know, if you have a chance somewhere, I mean, you can not move and try to pick up and maybe go play somewhere else or know more about the program and know what you're getting into or, you know, vice versa. Um, so you were waiting to hear on the offensive staff, the defensive staff, the recruiting. He said he's out there trying to get, fill it in as he goes. Um, yeah. When yeah. do you think? is the when do you think he has his all of his staff together if you had to guess if i had to guess i'm giving him about a month for all the staff um just like last time some of it's just because the, the state of florida hiring processes and you're familiar with that you live in tallahassee you've been around tallahassee long enough to know you know it takes a little while for the state to get going when it comes mm-hmm. to hiring people yeah but then the question is who's who are, who's going to bring in for like recruiting coordinator do you bring in a guy like billy roll who's a family hall of famer extensive connections with south florida and now his former player who played in the nfl and retired mm-hmm. teddy bridgewater is the head coach down there at uh, miami northwestern i believe so wow like i i think it'll probably be around the, the spring game before we really see like the full-on yeah. staff as far as everybody but probably a month before we get the offensive coordinator defense coordinator I'll probably get that about a week or two just okay. because we're all pretty way, much waiting I like what, that he's Patterson. that he's out there getting recruiting the experienced players that shows that it's the it's going to be changing you know this type of level of rec- the recruiting just the high, high school recruiting is so not what it used to be you know, I remember I used to buy these DVDs of like sudden impact, like or some like recruiting class. And when I first came, I was such a big deal. You know, you had camera crews everywhere at everybody's high school. But with this transfer portal, it's now it's really just the colleges. And and it's not only at the high level, it's all the way to division um HBCUs, division you know, BCS. So FBS, yeah. it's ev- it's every level because it's about it's it's yeah. it's changed the game, man. Like yeah. I have a cousin who's all county, all district down here, and he's got like one, two Division one offers. Whereas, man, you you backed this up before the advent of yeah. the transfer portal and these extra COVID years. That kid's maybe getting a, a G five offer. Right. Where I right. literally went up to Quinn Gray and asked him like, "Hey, you know, at at the uh, SWAC championship, I said, Coach, you looking for a high school defensive end?" He's like, "No." Mm. I'm looking for transfers, and that's a Division two school, right? That's that's I that's eye opening, man. It really is. It's like that the game has changed. It's it's almost preparatory now. Just the high school is, and and different. You just have to take your opportunity, and everyone, somebody's watching. You know, you can college ball is like minor league baseball to me, bro. If I'm being honest, you no, know, like yeah, it seems, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, the big schools are the majors. Yeah, except like what, the, and then you have the NFL draft, but there's no correlation, right? There's no, there's no rules, you know. We, what, what's to say? And then money rules the day. That's what it's going to come down to, as you saw right here in town. I, you oh, know, yeah. you oh, yeah. that that's what it's going to come down to. Money rules the day. It, it's going to take longer to get your staff in order when you know you're trying to get the money right. You know, it's going to take. 
So, but there's no rules to stop anybody, you know, from stopping this or making this like where it's not an advantage. What, like, when is the end game here? You see the NCAA coming down on different schools. It started with FSU. Now they're coming after Tennessee, Florida too. Uh, eventually, and I, I think Tennessee might be the one. They're just going to suit. I mean, they're they're already drafting up lawsuits against the NCAA. Florida State suing the ACC. What do you think? The Fed's got to get involved, right, to get this thing straightened nah, out, right? I, I think it's the, I think the NCAA is going to be over. Honestly, right. I, I think what what you're seeing from the SEC and the Big Ten are the two major conferences. Yeah that are saying, okay, especially in the case of the Big Ten, we've taken up the Pac-12 and every team that we wanted from there. And now the next thing is, for the SEC, are you going to start taking some of these teams and we're going to create a super conference and going to make it as close to the NFL and professional experience as possible? Yeah. And you're going to go from there. But I think they're going to break away from the NCAA. Oh, yeah. And it's really, it's going to go from being like minor league baseball to more like the English Premier League with the English soccer Ooh. leagues, where you have all these minor league and smaller leagues yeah. of soccer without and then the you delegation, have this one though. amazing league without exactly. the really, yeah. See, now see that would actually be enticing if they could come up with a formula to earn it. Still, we're like, hey, you can earn your way up, you know. But it feels like they don't want that to happen. It's almost just like political now, where they just want to hold power. <laughs> yes, and these conferences power aren't going to want to like. Yeah, they don't want to just be like, hey, we want to get opportunity here. No, it's like we want to keep opportunity as small as possible for our schools, for our chances to get, you know, the. it's really. <laughs> They're going to swallow up all the all the big time revenue producing schools. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lie. My wife's a UCF graduate. Mm-hmm. UCF's going to get swallowed up. I'm, I, I don't care who you are. That school has too much. In such in such a little time, mm-hmm. UCF is the largest school in the nation. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you know, and they fluctuate between the, them and the University of Te- Texas. Right. You think that they can't within five to ten years galvanize that alumni base? Oh, I and know. Really continue to build it up like that. To me, that's a sleep. That's a giant that ain't sleeping. Right. That just hasn't come to fruition. Well, and one of these conferences is going to get them. Yeah. Well, I think you're you're also seeing what how the sport has changed too with you know the the way it is you saw in boston college the coach going going to take the dc job in green bay you know and he even said came out and said why he was like i I can't deal with all the fundraising and politicking it takes now nowadays you know and he went i just want to coach ball and the football (laughs) aspect is just a little bitty part of it almost everything else kind of seems far greater as we small small schools you can't increase the size of the football stadium like right boston college is kind of landlocked and where they are where right i mean it's florida state you see what they're doing to the stadium there yeah they're (laughs) making it like a pro stadium yeah just so you can renovate the suites (laughs) it's just like any other if you look at any other pro stadium that's what the that's just on with the times man you're gonna see that across the board you know, and yeah, man. it's got to be, it's going to be, they're going to have to move to jobs, employees, whatever. Ah, well, we got ourselves a coach though. FAMU yeah, does. Thankfully. FAMU's got thankfully. a coach, a good, a good, a good decision. I think I'm happy for coach, for coach James Colsey. I think he was very humbled by the opportunity. It seemed like, um, I wish him nothing but the best. Um, yes. Won't be the first to coach this year. Wait for, in the basketball season, he will probably have another coach. Uh, oh Lord, yeah, coach and retire. Shoot, you, yes, that that could be on both teams. I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I thought Hamilton wasn't going to make it, but they he started to step up a lot. He's, he, I, I'm he, not gonna lie, I I wrote him off last month. Well, yeah, he stepped up, but he was not. They they really crapped the bed this last weekend. But you know, he's so he's been around so long, so. How much longer do you want to even deal with this new age type of, you know, game? Someone like that's been around as long as he has. But Keith, man, uh, we got a lot to look forward to. I might have to get you on here around when basketball season winds down. We'll talk some uh, hoops, see where you uh, have uh, FAMU going in the future. Maybe get some bracketology out of you. 
<laughs> get ready for national sign of day too. Yeah, I'm yeah, for exactly, that. man. Yeah, get ready for all that stuff. Um, who you got in the Super Bowl before I let you go? I hate to do it. I, I, as bad as I want the Chiefs to win, I'm going 49ers. Oh, okay. Yeah, you want the Chiefs to win? I do. I do. Okay. I just. Uh, yeah. I like Patrick Mahomes. I like his game. Man, but. he's uh, him and Andy Reid and and Kelsey. That like they figure it out. They're gonna figure it out. And they those do. drives, they can just get the Niners. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. At the end of the day, though, you got Purdy versus Mahomes. I think I was surprised to see the Niners initially favored, but we'll see. It's going to be a good one. It feels like a deja vu again. Four years ago, we get the same Super Bowl <laughs> matchup and same presidential election. We're just going to play it back. <laughs> we're just going to play baby. it back, man. Keith, man, thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll talk to you in the future, all right? All righty then. Appreciate you having me. All right, man. See you later. We had to go. Well, we got to get on out of here. I want to thank Keith Hadley for coming on. You need to go subscribe to the Fangs Up podcast, wherever you get your podcast. He's right about how long that would take. But good luck to James Colby the third. He's going to do a good job. I remember in the 93. Oh boy. Hard to believe he's been around. Went to Canada. Got a lot of coaching in Canada before he made it back here to the States. I'm asking about that. How he handled that cold weather up there. Oops. There it went Saturday night. Hamilton questioning leadership on his own team. The Knowles give up 101 points to the Cardinals. Ouch. In a must-win game, they did not. And they lost big time to the last place team in the country. They'll be at it again tomorrow night. Oops. There it is again. We'll hopefully see a better performance out of the Gnomes. Man, new basketball struggling. Might be looking for a new head coach. You could tell you. Super Bowl coming up. My first reaction is I think the Chiefs are going to win. You know? I think they have the better quarterback. I think their defense matches up with anybody. And I think the offense does exactly what it has to do. It can sometimes be explosive or it can just like go on an eight minute drive with seven first downs and do exactly what it needs to do. My first reaction is I'm going to take the Chiefs. But I'll think about it some more. We'll analyze it. We'll go over it. Then we'll talk about it next time. Right here on the North Florida Sports Network. We had to go. Our ride was here. We got a uh, shuttle uh, to our 